In this video, we will be reviewing Unit 2, which includes functions, mouse events, and properties. First, we will learn about a key concept in programming known as functions. A function defines a body of code. It can require certain arguments to be inputted to run properly, and can be called later to run the code in the body, so it can repeat this action multiple times. It's important that a function be given a proper name, both in the sense of legality and goodness. Legality is defined such that Python has no issues running the function, so make sure it doesn't have a name that starts with a number or is a name used by Python, also known as reserved words. Also, it's good practice to avoid special characters and punctuation. Goodness, however, is not defined by Python, but rather by the CS Academy framework to make sure that your function names are proper. They should be short and clear and reflect what the function is doing. For example, if the function is meant to take the average of three numbers, maybe call it average, not a random string of numbers and letters. In addition, your names should follow camel case, in which the first word is lowercase and the following words are all capitalized. You might also notice in some of the exercises that we write pass in the functions. Pass simply tells Python to do nothing. Let's take a look at this sample function to get a better idea of how functions work. First things first, we have to define it. So on line one, here we def draw big star with inputted values of star points and color. So as you can see here, we have camel case with the first word being lowercase and a pretty good name for what's about to be done in the function, which is draw big star. Then you get into the body of the function in which we draw a star at center 200, 200 with a radius 200 with the inputted number of points and the inputted color. Now, functions on their own don't do anything until you actually call them. So here are our two calls, draw big star with four points and the color black. So here it is in the background of the canvas. And here's our second call for a five pointed star that is gold. And here it is again on the canvas. Whenever you do an exercise in the CS Academy format, you'll notice at the bottom there will be a checklist. This shows all the different test cases your functions are going to have to pass. So a test case is just the input that's going to be given into the function and an expected output should be provided by your function, usually a specific type of drawing. If you think that you've completed the entire checklist and passed all the test cases, you can always click check code for the auto grader to check it and let you know if you have passed or not. CS Academy also has some built in functions that you can use. For example, if you want the user to be able to interact with your canvas, such as clicking on things, you can call two functions called on mouse press or on mouse release. So on mouse press, every time someone clicks, you can cause a certain event to happen. With on mouse release, every time they stop clicking, you can also have different events happen. It's important to note that the parameter names, so X and Y, can be changed, but the function name cannot be, since these are the function names that were defined in the package. As you progress through your exercises, you'll also note that oftentimes you are spending more time figuring out why your code isn't working than writing it and this is known as debugging. There's a few things you should keep in mind as you go about debugging. First and foremost, it might be because you actually haven't been using proper Python. This is known as a syntax error, and it'll usually pop up in the console. And if it does, make sure to read and see what line the error is occurring at, because it can often be a really quick and simple fix. Other times, it seems like the solution is correct to you, but when it runs to the auto grader, it says that it's wrong. Be sure to read the information given to you by the auto grader, because it might be that some of the test cases are being passed, and it could also be a really quick fix. If you still have no idea why your code isn't working, you should use print statements. These allow you to show information on the console to double check if you're properly entering all the functions that you want to. In math, Variables can be used to represent unknown or known values, and the same can be said about variables in programming. They are meant to store shapes such that they can be called upon later. So instead of having to constantly redefine a shape you want to draw, you can store it once and call it later on. It's also worth noting that there are things called global variables, which are defined outside of any function. 
be very careful with these because if any of your function goes in to modify that variable, say changing the radius of a circle, if you try to call on that shape later on, it will be modified and no longer the same variable you originally defined. In addition, make sure that your variable names are as good as functions, so keeping with camel case and being short and concise. As we learned in the previous unit, there's a lot of different properties that we can initialize whenever we create a shape, whether it's width, height, fill, border, etc. But even after we initialize a certain property, we can actually modify some of them. And here are some important properties to keep in mind for all shapes. There's of course the position properties, such as left, right, top, bottom, center X, center Y, and align. There's also size properties, such as width and height. You have the fill and border properties, as well as others that we haven't previously discussed, such as rotate angle, which allows you to rotate the angle of the shape, as well as visibility, which can be set to true or false, where true means it is visible on the canvas, and false means it is not visible on the can canvas. You can also change quantitative values using things such as plus equals or minus equals, or times equals or division equals. What these mean is they can pretty much add or subtract from an existing value. So x plus equals 4 actually just means x equals x plus 4. So we are resetting the variable to be equal to that variable with the operation being done on it. On top of the properties we discussed in the previous slide, some properties are only shape specific. So here are some listed. We have a circle with a radius, a regular polygon has radius and points, stars have radius, points, and roundness, line properties include the endpoints, dashes, line width, label properties include value, font, size, bold, italic, and app properties, the app being the entire program you're running, also has a background that you can set. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope that this helps you with your review of Unit 2. Always make sure to go through the notes and check in the review material on the CS Academy website.